people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. The girls are all weighed in, ready to throw down at the showdown tomorrow afternoon here stateside tomorrow night if you're in the United Kingdom. The reigning champion, Alicia Bumgartner, and the challenger of Argentina, Edith Soledad Matisse. Edith, who couldn't make the weight, she didn't make 130 pounds. Yeah, she weighed in around 133. Strategy or just a case of father time catching up to Edith Matisse? Is she trying to come in heavier so she'll be more durable? Or did she come in heavy because she simply couldn't make 130 pounds on that kind of note? Your guess is as good as mine, but what we do know is that the WBC title will not be on the line for Edith Mathise. Not that it matters, because I don't think it's going to change hands anyway. I think tomorrow, Alicia Bumgartner will successfully defend her newly obtained WBC title against the very seasoned Edith Mathise, who's been in there with anyone from Daniela Bermudez to Jelena Marjanovic to Eva Brutnitska. She's won some fights, she's lost some fights. And if nothing else, she's experienced, durable, and she's never been stopped in 29 professional contests, 29 professional bouts. What do you need to know about Edith? She's your according to Hoyle Argentinian slug. A mid-range to inside fighter that isn't prone to fighting off the back foot per se. This isn't the kind of fighter that wants to have to take too many steps back. Rather, they're more comfortable coming forward, being the aggressor, stalking their opponent. Edith is at her best mid-range to inside. Getting off those bent-on punches, those hooks, those body shots. That's her sweet spot. That's where she wants to be. So how does this play out with Alicia opposite the ring? Of course Alicia can be both the aggressor and the defender. I believe that Alicia Bumgartner will manage the distance against a very come forward and aggressive Edith Mathise. I believe that Alicia will walk Edith in the shots, walk her into counter punches. As Edith Mathise barrels forward trying to force the fight, force Alicia Boomgartner to stand and trade. I believe Alicia Boomgartner will have the upper hand here because she's got the faster feet and the faster hands. She knows how to negotiate distance. I believe that at this point in the junk shore, Alicia is the superior physical specimen. I think she's got faster feet and faster hands than Edith Mathise. Edith can be a handful against stationary targets and targets that ain't got enough mustard on their shots to keep her off. Against those kinds of fighters, Edith can be a handful, but Alicia... Alicia's got fast hands and fast feet. She's quick and she knows how to stay just off center while staying within striking distance to get off the counter shot. Side on, staying in a position to punch. Staying in an optimal position to throw. Alicia Baumgartner is quite capable of boxing on the back foot, though she's not the kind of fighter that's just going to give up real estate for the sake of giving up real estate. She'll take a half step back to set up something big to set up the counter shots we'll see how edith receives those counter shots as she's durable she's never been stopped before in 29 professional contests and she's fought some fighters some sluggers yeah she's fought some punches edith is a fighter you expect to stay in character what she's going to try to do is smother you more brawler than boxer it's up to alicia Bumgartner to exploit that use those characteristics against edith mathise the question is does alicia Baumgartner pack enough punch to stop a fighter that's never been stopped i'd say she does I'd say tomorrow on the undercard of Ben versus Van Heerden, Alicia Bumgartner will be the first woman to stop Edith Mathise because she's got all the ingredients to do it. The counterpunching, the speed, the mobility. She's riding high, beaming with confidence. Eager to leave another long-lasting impression on the fight fans the way she did when she stopped Terry Harpier. I'm sure Alicia Bumgartner wants to rack up another highlight reel knockout. She's a good enough boxer that she can win a clear decision against the very predictable Edith Mathise, but I think, given Edith's tendency to force the fight, she's gonna... Edith likes to come straight at her opponent. She's not gonna make herself very hard to find for Alicia. Quite the opposite. She's going to make herself available to her. Bad style matchup for Edith Mathise. A big part of the reason Edith had so much success against Eva Brutnitska in 
in Poland is because Eva's not much of a puncher. She's a completely defensively minded fighter, hit and not get hit, fighting on the balls of her feet, moving laterally away from her opponent. She won't assert herself. She's not the kind of fighter that does. Whereas Alicia will, and she is more of a puncher by far than Eva Brutnitska was. So I think... I think tomorrow Alicia's going to become the first woman to stop Edith Mathisa. Conservatively, you can pick Alicia Baumgartner to win a points decision. She's fully capable of doing that. But I'll go as far as saying that I think she's got everything it takes to rack up another highlight reel knockout. So that's my prediction. Alicia Baumgartner by way of knockout. Maybe six, seven rounds? Last one on Conor Vent. Hate to end on a negative note, but you did a piece with him that Matram put out. Carl Greaves quoted that and said that he's speechless. I think people alluded to the fact that he said he's done British level, done European. Obviously, he hasn't boxed Essamon and Avenis in British and European champ. You can't, no disrespect to Essamon, you can't put Essamon anywhere near world level. You can put Avenisian on world level, and I've said it before, Avenisian's a world-class fighter. That's the, the type of fight we should be in next. But by the way, you think I'm going to put him in with Avenisian over Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia, Adrian Broner, Kel Brook? Do me a favour, they sold about 400 tickets for Avenisian fight, right? The, have you seen the viewing figures on BT? It was about 6,000 people, average audience, for David Avenisian to fight, right? He has just boxed. I mean, what was the last fight he boxed? Mets, right? Liam Taylor before that. No disrespect to Liam Taylor. He couldn't win a British title. He boxed Mets, right? It was one of the most horrendous pieces of matchmaking I have ever seen. It was embarrassing, right? And you want to call out one of the biggest stars in world boxing, Conor Ben. Listen, Avenisian, world-class fighter. Not disputing that. But I need a guy and a fight that's going to fill up a big arena in the UK where worldwide audiences are going to clamour for. Not a guy that's just sold 400 tickets and done a 6,000 audience. I'll give him the respect of being a world-class fighter. And listen, if we can't get a big name, we'll fight Avenisian, no problem. But he ain't on the top of the shopping list, that's for sure. And Carl Greaves can be as speechless if he wants. Have a real fight. Not Mets whoever that geezer was, because that was embarrassing. How BT even allowed that show to take place, it was a shocking decision for their boxing archive, or whatever you want to call it. You know, David Avenesian is a guy who's been in there with the likes of Mean Machine, Igus Kavalyowskis, he's been in there with the likes of Lamont Peterson, a former champion in Shane Mosley. Faded when he fought him, I know, but he's still been in there with the likes of that guy. He took Kermon Laharaga's O. And Josh Kelly. He's over there on the Frank Warren BT Sports side of things, and people want to give Eddie Hearn stick over how he matches Conor Ben. I mean, there's something very uneven about all of this, and I've touched on it in the past that for being critical of Conor Ben. You're critical that Conor Ben is fighting Chris Van Heerden this weekend. But you weren't critical that the most Frank Warren could conjure up for his boy David Avenesian. You weren't critical that the most he could conjure up for him was Mets. I mean, who's that? What warrants more criticism? Ben versus Van Heerden or Avenesian versus Mets? David Avenesian, who's been in there with Igis Kavalyowskis, Lamont Peterson, Kermot Leharaga, Josh Kelly. It was David Avenesian's team that made the decision to cross over to the Queensbury Promotions Frank Warren side of things so that they could start hounding Eddie Hearn for a fight? How much sense does that make? And I'm not against the fight, by the way. I just understand what Eddie Hearn means when he says that David Avenesian isn't at the top of their priority list, and why would he be? He's not even one of their fighters. If the shoe were on the other foot, and it was Eddie Hearn's fighter that needed a fight, do you think Frank Warren? Do you think old fish eyes would do Eddie Hearn any favors? You know he wouldn't. Of course he wouldn't. So why is the expectation for Eddie Hearn any different? And listen, there's an upside on this, Demetrius. You're not fighting on an app. What's wrong with fighting on an app? People are going to see you. Kind of Ben fights on the now. The same kind of Ben you want to match David Avenesian against. I mean, you see how this works. That was Frank Warren at the kickoff press conference for Andre versus Parker. Hey, you guys heard what he said. And listen, there's an upside on this, Demetrius. You're not fighting on an app. What's wrong with fighting on an app? People are going to see you. It's gotten to the point to where people are expecting Eddie Hearn to accommodate Frank Warren's fighters, but Frank Warren's not expected to make any such accommodations for any one of Eddie Hearn's boys. Eddie wanted to match Joshua Buatzi against Anthony Yard. And as you can imagine, Anthony Yard, he blew off that idea. So he decided to make Joshua Buatzi versus Craig Richards instead. I'm not trying to convince you that Conor Ben versus Chris Van Heerden is a great fight. What I am saying is that David Avenesian is further along in his career 
than Conor Ben is. And he was just in there with Mets. So where's the bar of expectation for that guy? And where's the bar of expectation for Frank Warren to deliver him a better fight than Mets? Because there seems to be a bar of expectation in play for Eddie Hearn every time he makes a fight. But Frank Warren... He gets to make fights like Avanesian versus Mets with impunity. There's a double standard in play there, and it's a very obvious double standard. For what it's worth... Connor Ben versus Chris Van Heerden is a fight. Being honest, it's not a fight that I'm excited about. I anticipate that Connor Ben, he's going to smoke that guy. He's going to smoke Chris Van Heerden tomorrow because Chris, he's a decent sized guy who's been making welterweight for some time now. I think this cut might have been a hard cut. I think Connor packs enough punch he can knock that guy out. I'm expecting him to knock that guy out. Beyond that, beyond tomorrow's fight, I'm expecting that Eddie Hearn match him against someone better than a Chris Van Heerden. But I have that same expectation for Frank Warren and David Avenesia. It's not one way. Now, Eddie Hearn promises that if Conor Ben makes it through tomorrow's fight, you're going to see him in a mega fight during the summer months. But whether or not Frank Warren can get David Avenesia in a mega fight ain't Eddie Hearn's problem. That's reality. A guy as seasoned as David Avenesia should be closing in on a world title shot, a world title opportunity, not an unbeaten up and comer for a payday. He's moving backwards. His team is if they're hounding Eddie Hearn to let David fight Conor. But by the way, you think I'm going to put him in with Avanesian over Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia, Adrian Broner, Kel Brook? You heard the short list of names Eddie Hearn mentioned. Kel Brook, who's currently in talks to potentially face Chris Eubank Jr., provided Chris doesn't price himself out of that fight. We talked about that in my previous video. He also mentioned a former champion in Danny Garcia, a PBC fighter who's on the PBC side of things. How likely is it that Conor Ben gets that guy in the ring? About as likely as him getting Adrian Broner to play ball. Adrian Broner, who is recently quoted as saying, Fuck Conor Ben, he's broke. That's what he said. Adrian Broner has two-word response to Conor been calling him out for a fight as the destroyer gears up for Chris Van Heerden bout. Adrian Bronier was recently in attendance for the Erickson Lubin versus Sebastian Fundoria fight in Las Vegas, and when asked by Behind the Gloves about a potential fight with Conor Ben, he simply responded, he's broke. This comes as a contradiction to what Ben's promoter, Eddie Hearn, told Sun Sport earlier this year. I have spoken to Bronier, and ideally, he wants a fight before he fights Conor, because he is on this crusade of seriousness. Can you believe? He wants to have one last Last run at it, and that means being prepared for the Conor Ben fight. He stressed he is ready to fight Conor Ben, but that he would like a warm up fight in March if possible. It's not looking like Adrian's receptive to a kind of Ben fight. Looks a lot like he's back over there on the Showtime side of things, and the people over there at Showtime are charting his next course. Thus, I don't think Danny Gersha or Adrian Bronier are likely opponent options for Conor Ben's next fight, should Conor make it past Chris Van Heerden. And I reiterate, I think he will. I think he's going to stop Chris. One name that Eddie Hearn did mention in that recent video, that recent soundbite, was the name of Mikey Gersha. Gersha, Mikey Gersha, who was upset last year by Spain's own Sandor Martin. Mikey hasn't rebounded off that loss yet. A fight, a potential fight, between Conor Ben and Mikey Gersha at 147 pounds. Well, seems a bit more likely than either a Danny Gersha fight or an Adrian Bronier fight. It's more likely than those fights, but how likely is it really? How likely is it that Mikey Gersha would travel to the United Kingdom to face Conor Ben when we all know that Mikey Gersha, he don't fight on the cheap? Or would the fight between Conor and Mikey take place here in America? Is that how Eddie plans on getting it over the line? And what's Mikey going to want for the fight? Because he's coming off a loss. What if Mikey and what he wants for the fight don't align with what the zone is willing to pay him? Because he's coming Coming off a loss. Essentially, what I'm getting at is maybe David Avenesian will get a crack at Conor Ben after all. Perhaps if all other options have been exhausted and no one else is receptive, then maybe, then maybe they'll give him a call. When it comes to Adrian Broner, we just mentioned, Showtime head Stefan Espinoza is planning a comeback fight for Adrian Bronier. How many comebacks are we up to now? How many second, second chances are we up to now? Adrian's in camp, Stefan Espinoza told ES News. He's gone away. He's in Colorado for camp, demonstrating how serious he is. We're working on opponents and dates for him. He's clearly committed to it. I think he's still got gas in the tank. I think there are interesting matchups. And I think that Adrian Broner at this point is just fighting for a check. He's likely overestimating his own marquee value. Which is likely why he couldn't come to a deal with the people over there at Matchroom. They're not willing to overpay him. And the only people that are left willing to work with him. Coddle him, I should say. Because at this point, it's plain old coddling. People over there at Showtime and Stefan Espinoza, they are coddling. 
this 32-year-old man who has been a staple at Showtime, appearing as a headliner on the network seven times going back to 2016. Whether you love him or hate him, you know he's still a draw. Is he? Stefan Espinosa thinks he is. But I don't. And I don't think he's all that much of a draw either. I expected much better numbers from the Pacquiao versus Broner pay-per-view. I expected that thing to do Half a mil? in excess of 600,000 pay-per-view buys. It only did 400,000. An estimated 400,000 as these reports are often embellished and exaggerated. Who knows if it even did 400,000 pay-per-view buys. But I was expecting more. I was. I was expecting at least half a million to 600,000 pay-per-view buys when you take a polarizing guy, what's supposed to be a polarizing guy in Adrian Broner and a beloved fighter in Manny Pacquiao. And it did not meet my expectations. Adrian Broner isn't viewed as an elite level fighter by the fight fans anymore. And I don't think enough attention is going into that by way of the networks, by way of Stefan Espinoza and Showtime. There's only so many second, second chances you can give this guy before the fight fans themselves give up on him, even if you still have him. They're working on fight dates, but fights with who? More guys like Santiago? Who do you think wants to see that? And what's it cost you every time you roll Adrian Broner out? Who do you think really wants to see him fight? It's already been 12 months, you understand. It's already been a year since he last saw action. The Giovanni Santiago fight, February of 2021, February of last year. It's already been a year since then. And whatever traction, whatever momentum he was intended to amass from that fight, it has all but dissipated. Not that he put on a show-stopping performance in that fight. Hell, some people thought he lost. He's done a lot of griping about the PBC since then. What's going on over there? What fighters are getting paid and what he wants out of what remains of his own career? It seems he was shopping himself around that there was some kind of a dialogue with the people over there at Matchroom, Eddie Hearn. What made a Conor Ben fight for Adrian Broner intriguing is that it would have been a deviation from the norm. Everybody's expecting Adrian Broner to stay on the Showtime side of things. Everybody's expecting Adrian Broner to take on a couple of soft touches in what is another second, second chance. Everybody's expecting that, and everybody's bored with it. Fighting Conor Ben on the Matchroom would have been a welcome change. By myself was never holding my breath to see that happen, see that come into fruition. It all seemed very far-fetched to me, even if it was a tad bit intriguing. Who does Showtime plan on fattening up Adrian Broner for? Because that's the most they can do with him at this point. He's a familiar face and a familiar name that you can feed to some unbeaten up-and-comer. I don't think Adrian Broner himself wants to fight a Jaron Boots Ennis or the winner of Butaya versus Stanionis. I think that Adrian Broner is just fighting for a check, thus he must appear in a fight that can get him a check. A decent-sized one. So maybe they match him against, I don't know, Danny Gersha. It's been well over a year since Danny had a fight. He's not doing much of anything. Maybe they match him against Danny Garcia, or maybe they match him against Keith Thurman. Provided Keith doesn't end up fighting Terrence Crawford, if those rumors about Terrence Crawford don't end up checking out. That he plans on entering into a two-fight deal with the PBC, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what checks out.